Today we're going to take a look at what we call vector value functions. Basically what they do is that they can describe a path along a surface. For example, like let's say we have the surface right here. Um, I can draw a path going along with it. Now there are lots of different paths we can take as we travel, of, as we travel along this. And today we're going to take a look at how we can describe those paths on a surface using parametric equations. And this is very similar to what we did a couple years ago in pre-cal. So to write a parametric equation, basically we're going to take our, our functions, our, our variables, x, y, and z, and we're going to write them in terms of t, our parameter. We're going to write them in terms of an independent variable, that a variable that's independent from x, y, and z themselves. So we've done this many, many times before. Uh, a vector value function, the only difference is we're going to write this as a function. So we might have, so we would write this as r of t, where r is a vector. There's our x portion, there's our y portion, and there's our z portion. And we have your i, j, k. Remember, i, j, k are unit vectors. Now what's really interesting about this one is right here is that this is actually the path. This, this is a path. It is a line on a surface. Uh, a really neat way to kind of look at it, I will use my toilet paper roll of mathematics. If I have this, whoops, sorry. If I have this surface right here, or this toilet paper roll, this is a surface, it's a cylinder, and I'm going to start with a path on it. So starting at the bottom, if I trace a line going across, there's my, whoops, missed it. If I trace this path on here, that's kind of what we're doing here, where x is changing, y is changing, and z are changing, according to some t value, I would get a path along the surface. And in this case, we of course get a cylinder right here. And this is a line. It's easy to see if we were to project this, this on, a, uh, on a plane, we can easily see we get a line. So the path is kind of like a line on a surface. <coughs> um, the other thing kind of mentioned is that this is only two-dimensional. And that's again why we call this a path, like it's a, it's a two-dimensional path, it's like a line on a surface. Uh, so this is only two-dimensional, and this is a trace, so, and where this is two-dimensional, where t is the independent variable. Now, we can do a vector equation in three-dimension as well. For example, we can write the equation of a surface also using it, but we have to use two independent variables. So what we do here is we would use something like r of t u, where we have one variable describing x, one dis variable maybe describing the y path. So we'll talk about an example like that later on today. So let's take a look at how we can write a vector valued function. So we have this line here, this is our symmetric form. We want to write the vector valued equation in terms of r and t. So in other words, what they want us to do is we want to write a vector in terms of t. And we've done this before. We have to write x in terms of t, y in terms of t, z in terms of t. So we can do x's first, so we would get t equals 3x minus 1 over 4, so x would be 4t plus 1 divided by 3. Looking at the y's, we know t would be y over 2, so y would equal 2t. Looking at the z's, we would get t equals z minus 1 over 3, so z would be 3t plus 1. I can now write these as a vector value function. r of t would be something in the i plus <laughs> something in the i plus something in the j plus something in the in the k direction. And the the i, that's our x's, y's, z's. So x, I should give myself more room here, would be 4t plus 1 over 3. Y would be 2t, k would be 3t plus 1. And that would be our vector valued function right there. So now we want to find the domain of the function. In other words, we want to find out what's the domain for x, what's the domain for y, what's the domain for z. Now all of these are all dependent on t. So these all depend on t. So I look at t here. Um, t, there, I look for any restrictions on t. Are we dividing by 
zeros? Do we have a risk of uh, square roots of a negative? Same with that. We don't have any domain restrictions, so t could be any number, all real numbers. And because t could be all real numbers, now we can look at how that affects x's. Well, if t could be anything, there's really nothing here preventing x from being anything. So x would be an element of all real numbers. Same thing for the y's. Y could be an element of all real numbers. Same thing for the z's. So z would be an element of all real numbers. And that we would get for our domain. Piece of cake, right? All right, so let's talk about how we can write a so let's talk about how we can write a surface as a vector equation. Now one thing that's really neat is this equation right here, this x squared plus y squared plus z, is a surface. Matter of fact, you might remember this as an elliptic paraboloid. So I can graph this. Well, let me go ahead and graph this right here. Whoops, go ahead and get out of there. New document, add a graph. Now I want to be in parametric form, 3D parametrics. So there's my 3D, and I'm going to change this to parametric. Whoops, sorry. I don't want this to be parametric. That's later on. Getting ahead of myself. Ta da! I'll use my other graph. We'll come back to that calculator in just a minute. So let me see here. Escape. There we go. I just want this to be in three dimensions right now. That's what I wanted. And this says z is a function of x and y. z is a function of x and y. I just type that in. x squared plus y squared. I press enter and you get our surface. You get our elliptical paraboloid right there. What we're going to do next is now we're going to write this as a vector valued function. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the path or I guess more specifically a path on the paraboloid of the elliptical paraboloid right here. Now notice we're only one term here. That's the reason why it's going to be one. That's the reason why this is going to be a path. So there is only one independent variable right there. So to do this, they're telling us let x be t, let y equal t plus 1, although you can let it be anything you want. z then would be written as t squared plus t plus 1 squared. And if I were to write this as a vector equation, vector value function, we would get t i plus t plus 1 j plus t squared plus t plus 1 squared k. Let's graph this now. Let me graph my other one. So you got my other one now here. So there's my equation, but let's see what this would look like. T, now notice that's TU. The U is say if we want to make this in a surface, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's say let this be T. This would become T plus 1. And over here we would get T squared plus T plus 1 squared. And now let's take a look. Notice this is our elliptic paraboloid, but it's not the entire thing. Instead, this is just a path along it. So, ah, not really working. Hold on. There we go. Nope. Nope. There we go. This is just a path on it. So there's my elliptic paraboloid. You can kind of imagine we're just like there's this little edge right here. We're going up this paraboloid. We're going so we just got that little bit of a surface. It's like we draw a single line along this paraboloid. And that's what we're getting right there. And again, you can change the surface. You can change this if you like. If I go tab, let's see if this works. It didn't work last time. There we go. Instead of making this t plus 1, let's make this uh, t squared or something. Let's see what that does. If I make that t squared, then of course this just becomes t to the fourth. And let's see what that does to the graph. And what we get, a, and it looks kind of the same, but if you notice, it is a little bit longer. So we wind up with a, maybe in this case a longer path along that paraboloid. All right. Next, now we want to write the equation in terms of r, t, and u. And if you notice for this one, now we're going to have two independent variables. So let's talk about what that does to the graph. 
Well, if there are two independent variables, well, that means now we're getting into our surface. See, if I just look, where's my, there's my toilet paper roll of mathematics. See, this would be like an example of number one. Along the surface of our cylinder, I have this path. That would be an example like number one right here. But when we had two independent variables, now we're talking, uh, I'm going to have a length and a width. So I'm going to plot a lot more than just a path. We're going to plot the entire surface. So let's see what this would look like. Here they're saying that x be t, y be u, so z would be t squared plus u squared. As my vector valued function, t u, because we're in two dimensions now, that's going to become t i plus u j plus t squared plus u squared k. And let's graph that on here really quickly. Tab, I'm just going to go ahead and tab this up. Come on, there we go. Go up here, and I'll let that be t. Whoops, this would be u. And down here, we would get u squared. And if I graph this, you're not going to see the whole thing, but if you notice, this is no longer just a trace. Now, we have some domain restrictions on here. We'd have to fix them. But what you can start to see, hopefully, is that we got part of our elliptic parabola. We would, and if we change our domains, uh, we would get an entire paraboloid right here. So we get, we're actually generating the surface. So where this is the path on the elliptical paraboloid, this down here will generate the elliptical paraboloid. That will actually develop the paraboloid itself because we're in two dimensions. It's just like this. Remember, if we did something like f of x equals x squared, I get a parabola. But if we did something like f of x y equals x squared, well, then we're going to get that uh, we're going to get that uh, hyperbolic. So then this becomes our parabolic sheet right here. So we're adding another dimension to it, a, ver a, a letter v, v to it. So that would look something like this. And we would get our height to it. It's kind of the same thing here. Where in two dimensions, where, where we have one independent variable, we get a trace, like a line, like a parabola here. Over here, we're going to get the actual surface itself. All right, go to part two. We're going to talk a little bit more about some more examples here. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.